stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. Joining me now is UFC heavyweight. Man, how does that sound, Josh? You are a UFC heavyweight now. I know. Well, I don't think it'll be official until I step in there and the, mm. they start the round. After okay. they say go, I'm going to be like, I did it. I'm happy with the <laughs> UFC. <laughs> that would be a first, right? That would be a first if you actually did that. Yeah, I got past all the COVID tests, like <laughs> all my medicals, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the weird part of this whole pandemic and, and just this year is that for a UFC fighter, you, you don't have a normal fight week. You have to go through like quarantines and, and, and COVID tests and all that stuff, man. How was that going through everything? Um, it wasn't that bad, honestly, because, um, usually in fight week, I don't like to do a lot of walking around and stuff like that. Um, especially my coach like wants to walk like 20 miles, like the day before. I'm like, I don't want to do that. (laughs) So it's kind of an excuse to sit in the hotel and play video games and stuff like that and just relax. So it wasn't that bad for me. You know, what, what does suck is like, you know, like the couple weeks leading up to it. You know, now that I'm getting closer, I had to be even more careful about getting COVID. Um, and then uh, I have to kind of limit my training partners and I have to like, I mean, I like hope that they are kind of being safe. You know what I mean? They're not going to a bunch of crazy stuff and going to the inner city and stuff. And because I'm in an area where there's not a lot of COVID, but we're close enough to Detroit and stuff like that where it's pretty bad down there. So, so I, I kind of be mindful of that. Did you take the the COVID test at home already, or is it coming up soon? No, I have it tomorrow. Okay, all right, so it's coming up. Yeah, I got my package. I had to schedule it, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then a doctor has to watch me on uh, on Zoom or Skype or something. All right, all right. Well, before we get into the fight, your your debut, let's go back to uh, August Contender Series. Another first round finish. Compared to the first appearance on the show, was it a better performance? You felt. Um, hmm. uh, I don't, it's tough to say because I felt like my first fight was very, I kind of just mauled the guy, but he didn't really give me much, you know what I mean? So it's hard to, it's hard to really judge that because he was hesitant. He didn't pull the trigger when this time, you know, my guy was throwing back at me. So Maybe the first one looked better, and then I had, like, a crazy knockout. But uh, I think the second one was more rewarding for me just because I like, um, you know, somebody – I actually feel like somebody's trying to kick my ass, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I still win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely, man. It was a very impressive. You know, you get the contract after a few days when everything settles in for you. What was the mindset? Uh, it's – I feel like it still hasn't really mm. – it's, I kind of describe it like this. It's like a fight. Like after, um, after I win the fight, I'm not excited. I'm just relieved. You know what I mean? Because I've envisioned this uh, for a very long time. Um, this is what I planned to happen. And then it's like, well, thank goodness it happened the way I planned. And like a fight in the UFC is kind of the same thing. Like I wasn't like overly joyed to be in the UFC. I was just like, oh my goodness, thank God, because I've been. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I planned this. I wanted this to happen. And um, I believed it would happen. But it's been 10 years. You know what I mean? And a lot of ups and downs. And uh, I feel grateful, but mostly just relieved. You're a guy that has come on for a second time on the show and got the contract. When you see other guys come back and, and get the contract, too, this year it has happened a few times. You know, how, how happy are you for them? Because you know that that feeling that experience of like going there once and not getting it but the second try you got it yeah no i i definitely uh i'm happy for them mm-hmm. <laughs> i think that was a dude that did it three times I'm yeah, not yeah. Sure. jamie yeah. pickett that's crazy uh. <laughs> he got it on third one right yeah he did yeah like how do you deny him at that point <laughs> exactly and it was impressive too i think he landed like 25 unanswered shots to get the finish it was where it was crazy wow. wow that's crazy i have to go back and watch but that that's amazing um i don't know if any of the people that came back lost their first fight but i would definitely feel for them too because i i can imagine um being there 
and not showing up and then failing and feeling like you've just taken so many steps back. Um, I can see how that could even make somebody not want to do it anymore. But I, I like that the people still persevered and like, no, I'm still going to make this happen for myself and uh, got back on the show and won. And that's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Now, when you get back to Michigan, what, what, would, what were you doing? Were you just focused on continuing fatherhood? You know, was there any challenges that you faced in the last couple of months with that? Um, well, I got the call while I was on the, or not the call, but a message while I was on the plane, uh, offering me Parker. And so I'll, before I even got back to Michigan, I had already said yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'd already had a fight. Um, so when I got back, it was just, uh, it was back to training and everything. And, uh, as far as my daughter, Eva, uh, it's been, it was the same thing where we were just, um, work, you know, my girlfriend and baby mama, she, uh, is a lawyer. She is at a law firm three days a week. She's home two days a week. And then I'm, I stayed at home dad for those other days and I'll take Eva to the gym. And so we have a schedule worked out. That's been great. And I've been able to get all the training in that I need. And she's been awesome to, uh, help kind of like work that out. And whatever I want, yeah, anytime I need anything extra, I'm like, hey, I would really like to train on this day or this time, or we'll work it out, we'll make it happen. Yeah, that's great, the balance, man, because sometimes, you know, if you don't have that balance, dude, that I think that bleeds into, like, your training and, and, and your mental focus for a fight. Yeah, yeah, and if I'm not, like, getting exactly what I want, then I'm start, I kind of get nervous, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my God, I'm getting frustrated and... And then, um, like, it's just a downward spiral once you're frustrated with this and, like, you know, you don't have good training sessions and all that stuff. And uh, I've been very grateful for this camp. I'm literally injury-free, um, didn't have one injury, didn't have – knock on wood, it's not, we're not fighting yet, but I'm pretty close at this point. I don't think I'll injure myself. Um, and I've gotten all the training that I wanted to get in, and so it's been great. So you, you started camp right when you landed back in Michigan for this fight? Uh, I, so in the last, in the 10 years that I've been training, I've never actually taken a break. I've never taken a break. Um, so I'm right back in the gym, but you know, it's a climb. We're climbing back again. So it's not like just go, go to the extreme. It's like, okay, now I'm back doing uh, more aerobic cardio, like maybe 30, 40 minutes on the bike. And then, um, just doing my skill work and all that. So it wasn't me like breaking down the body, but I was back in the gym right away. I think you mentioned before the contender series, you focused a lot on strength and conditioning and, and that allowed you to like have more food. You know, you, you, you had more intake on food and, and everything like that. How has that continued with, you know, like with the strength and conditioning and eating and, and all of that balance out? So again, I've made my strength conditioning a huge focus in this fight. Um, although I have done more skill work, mitt work, uh, I think last fight was like conditioning and strength and all that up here and mid work here. And now it's kind of like still, still uh, not the same, but I did uh, do my mid training and stuff like that. My skill work and work on training partners and all that. And, um, what was it? Oh, so for the food thing, I actually went to the PI uh, shortly after I got home and they did all the tests on me and stuff. And one of the tests that they had did or had done was, uh, checking my metabolism and my metabolism was like extremely low, like, uh, like for like a 130 pound person, <laughs> like my resting, uh, burning calories. And they and do all the other tests. They realized that I don't eat enough food. That's the problem. So they hooked me up with trifecta, um, which is like a free service for all the UFC players, which is awesome. Um, and I've just been like eating so much food and I haven't lost a ton of weight, but I'm able to eat even more food and recover so much faster. So uh, my biggest focus is just like, just keep eating so that my metabolism can get back up and I can be like a normal person, my size, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> have you, did you find out anything else about yourself with those tests? Uh, I have the highest bone density that's ever been tested there. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I know. I actually, um, I knew that I had high bone density. I went to Ann Arbor. And uh, I did a DEXA scan, same scan they did there at the PI. Um, and when the woman, when the girl that um, saw the thing, she said that I'm, she said that she, she was retiring in two months. And she literally said the words, I am grateful to have seen something like this in my time here. <laughs> Which made me feel like I was Wolverine or like a superhero. <laughs> um, she said the only person that's ever come close to you was a, 
a professional football player who had mm. was like a 5.1 on the scale that they had and i was a 6.2 Wow. And normal at my level at uh, my age is 2.2. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was almost off of the sheet, the number on the scale, which is, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Which makes is. sense why I can't swim because I sink. <laughs> I have phone density, I sink. <laughs> well, have you had any broken bones in the past? Like any facial stru uh, fractures or anything like that? Uh, so when I was in first grade, <clears throat> I got punched by a sixth grader. Uh, and it broke my face from like here all the way up into my nose, like right here. And I didn't know it until later in life. It's the only heavy, like, uh, it was like fifth grade that I, or sixth grade that I got an x-ray on my head. And it was the only time that I remember getting knocked out, like getting hit super hard. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. And, uh, when you're, when you're in first grade, a sixth grader is like a borderline superhero compared to you. Like <laughs> I remember him drop, he punched me in the face right in front of my house and dropped me. <laughs> But other than that, I, I've never had a broken bone or anything like that. What kind of asshole do you have to be a sixth grader beating up a first grader? That's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a funny story. Like, uh, I had I was in my dad's house. I lived in my dad's and my mom's house, and uh, I took a bunch of pornos that my dad had and I put them in a shoebox, <laughs> and I brought them to my mom's house. And um, the neighbor kid uh, was there, and his sister was there. And I'm like, I'm not, I can't show you because your sister's here. And she's like, I won't tell anybody. And then, so I showed him and then she went home and told on him and he got in trouble. And when he got in trouble, he came over and I was just in front of my house and just punched me in the face. <laughs> yeah, damn, that's... damn shoebox portos, man. Yeah. <laughs> got me in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I guess, the, you know, you find out about your bone destiny. That's great for like. You know, because a lot of guys, they suffer like broken bones continuously. So having that yeah. is, is somewhat of an advantage for yourself to, I guess, not get injured as an adult, you know, not as a kid. Yeah. No, it's nice mm -hmm. to know that, like, you know, throwing kicks and stuff like that, I'm just a little bit, I'm less prone to mm -hmm. uh, getting my shin or my, my bones and my feet broken. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, blocking kicks and stuff like that, less likely to get that nasty folding of the forearm. That makes everybody cringe when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that'll ever happen. Now, scorping fighting system, you, you go back there, you're training there. You know, who do you work with over there? There's, I, I noticed that there's a lot of guys that are somewhat, you know, in the lower weight classes, and you're you're kind of like the bigger guy. The yeah, You've been there for a while, too. You're like the OG, because I've spoke to some of the yeah. prospects in your gym. Yeah, 100%. I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm at, like, I'm a teacher at a, at a, kindergarten class or something like that i'm the biggest guy there <laughs> um but i have brought in uh his name is ryan prokipke he's actually the when i fought pro he's the first guy i've ever lost to as a pro mm. um i brought him in he's the same height same fight style uh as my opponent coming up and at one point he had the the recipe to beat me mm. and i just thought he'd be a great training partner to come in and, and he has been awesome he He's come up uh, three mornings a week uh, since I asked him to for like almost the entire camp and um, has uh, mimicked my opponent and been awesome. Great. Now, you know, Parker Porter, like when you break him down and look at the matchup, what do you see? I haven't watched it. I watched this fight. Uh, <laughs> I watched this fight in the UFC, but I was kind of playing World of Warcraft at the same time. So I was like doing this and I haven't watched this fight since. Mm. Um, because I don't like watching my yeah. opponents fight. It makes me, um, I just get, I, if I don't know what to expect, then I'm nervous. And when I'm nervous, I fight way better. So I let my coaches, uh, watch the fight. I, you know, I let Ryan watch the fight and stuff. And then them just kind of devise a plan and I'm just doing things and what they think is best for me, uh, based on him. But I don't know anything about him really other than what they tell me. So the, the coaches, they put, a game plan in place and basically what you do is just go out there and execute it or is it more of your impl improvising do you believe like you have a game plan but when you go in there you see something and you improvise they tell me what his strengths are mm -hmm. and um what he primarily does and and what you know what is weak at um and then we just drill stuff between there so i know exactly what he does and what he's good at and what you know his plan is probably going to be but i don't um I'm not watching him mm -hmm. and I don't know, just something about watching somebody. Um, I just get, 
I just don't have the nerves anymore. Like, I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I'm just not nervous. And when I'm not nervous, I just don't perform. And that's kind of like the opposite of everybody, you know? Like most people, yeah. they don't want to be nervous. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's it's funny because, like, as I was, um, I never played, I never really played sports um, until MMA. Like, I was on a football team, and, like, they let me in one game when we were already winning by, like, 30 points for half, or for one play. <laughs> So I didn't really play. I was terrible. I was not athletic at all. Um, I tried out for the basketball team every year. I never made it. <laughs> um, but so I never really had pre-competition nerves. And whenever I would fight, I would just get like my legs are shaking. My arms feel like, I don't know, like just heavy, just so heavy. I feel so slow and, and stuff like that. And I actually took 21 or 22 amateur fights to try to get rid of those nerves but I realized that like they're always going to be there. Um, and I think I think I was getting almost excessive nerves at that point. I worked with a mindset coach, and that actually made me the opposite. I had no nerves, so I had to find like a, a happy balance. And it really is just not much of my point of fight. And then I just I'm like the perfect amount of nervousness, or have the perfect amount of nervousness right before a fight. Yeah, I think that that's one of the most interesting dynamics about you. Whenever I speak with you. I feel like that's very interesting how you use those nerves to perform. You know, a lot of guys, they they rather not have the nerves. You know, they don't want nothing in their mind. But, man, for yourself, it's worked because those finishes are coming. Now, that's what you want to do next again is, is continue that. Yeah, it is obnoxious on fight day because I'm like, mm. oh, you know, I'm doing this. Oh, oh my God. God. Like, what time is it? <laughs> I just want to get in there and do it and get it done with. Um, but I just know that I'm more on edge. You know what I mean? Like, if I, like, a, like a wild animal, like, ooh, like I don't know what this thing's going to do. And you're kind of like more aware and hyper aware and mm-hmm. kind of, um, I don't know, your reflexes are there. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of the same thing. So do you, do you feel like when you do step in there, that first round, you're just like, the nerves is there. So you, you, you f- quit, start faster, I guess. Because, you know, some guys, like if you've seen them, they, they don't start fast. They, they need to be in there for yeah. a few minutes. But for yourself, it doesn't exactly. seem like it. Well, I used to be a very slow starter, and I got, like, pretty fucked up because of that. Like, I've gotten over 40 stitches in my face because I'm a slow starter. But that's fixed it, so I'm not – I feel like I'm not as uh, – I don't have to get beat up a little bit before I can get in the, in the moment. You know what I mean? I can start um, sharp and maybe not get hit as much. <laughs> With your coaches telling you what the strengths are, what do you feel like the finish will come? Do you feel like it's going to come on the ground like you're – your last fight, or do you feel like you could get this finish on the standing up? Uh, I think it'll be standing, um, but you know, sometimes it happens where you, you hit somebody and they don't necessarily go out, and I have to go to the ground with them um, to get the finish. That might happen, so definitely not going to rule that out. But I definitely, uh, as always, I mean, it's no it's no secret for me to say that I'm always trying to uh, finish the fight standing. So, do you feel like right now it's better, like at 31 years old? to be entering the UFC compared to maybe, let's say, you know, five years ago where, you know, they were trying to fast track a lot of guys, especially in the heavyweight division. Do you feel like you're mentally and physically, you're just much, much more prepared? I think for me, uh, it is an advantage just because every fight I've always just like, whether I won or I lost, I'm always um, trying to figure out how I can be better. I'm always in the gym. I'm always um, just kind of like recalibrating. You know what I mean? Always trying to, um, always try to be better. And I feel like some guys only do that when they lose. So, in a way, I think uh, I think about it a lot. Actually, I think about would I have been better in the UFC if I got signed right after the first contender fight? Um, and I just decided that I think that I I have I'm gonna have a better run at it now than I would have then. Just um. Especially because I work with Chris Down now, my strength and conditioning coach. He's incredible. Like, um, I just feel like such a better athlete now, uh, and I think that that's going to be huge, especially for heavyweights, uh, because you either see a heavyweight uh, knockout pretty early, or there's a battle of um, cardio, <laughs> you know, what I mean? of conditioning. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, you don't always get the knockout right away, and it comes down to who's the better athlete, and that's. That's what I've been focusing on. So worst case, I don't knock him out. Then I'll have something in the tank to still be throwing and and 
trying to win up until the end of the fight. Well, you know, your run starts November 28th. Not much time left. UFC Fight Night Las Vegas. Thank you, Josh, for the time, man. And uh, I always enjoy the chats, man. You, Like I said earlier, you do bring that uh, that uniqueness of the, the nerves and, and all that and using it to your advantage, man. Uh, uh, it's interesting to me. Yeah, and I feel like I could only know that if I didn't go through that have nerves, don't have any nerves. You know what I mean? Because when you're nervous, people are always telling you, like, you should use it. It's good. You're like, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> so I'm fortunate enough to have that journey of having zero nerves and then like realize, no, you do need the nerves. And sometimes you can't tell people that, you know, you can't say like, you know, that fire's hot. You have to touch it. It feels hot. And then just no. <laughs> so um, any fighters that are watching this, the nerves are actually good. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. Pick a move.